All right, let's talk about lymphoma. We're gonna do a basic intro, talking about signs and symptoms. Then we will jump into the family tree of lymphomas, followed by Hodgkin's, and then a breakdown of all of the non-Hodgkin's types, uh, including the B and T cell subtypes. And then we'll just do an overview of translocations in general for lymphomas and leukemias, uh, plus look at major histologies that I think y'all should be able to recognize. Um, all right, so you know we talked about leukemias, we talked about plasma cell dyscrasias, chronic myeloproliferative disorders, uh, last but not least. So specifically lymph nodes, as you might have guessed, and it is lymphoid, not myeloid, B is greater than T. Um, painless, swollen lymph nodes. If they are painful, it usually is indicative of an infection. If it's painless, it's more likely to be a cancer. Uh, night sweats are also going to be a common sign. And this is on top of things like uh, cachexia that we might have seen earlier in weight loss. Um, so people have lymph nodes and that's where the cancer is going to be. And we're going to see some of these terms like follicle, um, medullary, um, you know, things like the cortex with the B cells and paracortex with the T cells. We talk a lot about this in the um, in the immunology section, but I mean, we're going to see things like marginal lymphomas and follicular lymphomas, et cetera. So that might be mildly helpful to review. Um, all right. So this breakdowns into two categories, non-Hodgkin's Hodgkin's, which has these subtypes and these subtypes, a couple more subtypes of Hodgkin's that we'll see, but much less important. Um, so like we said, breakdown looks like this. Um, and do the two overarching categories of the non-Hodgkin's or Hodgkin's, which we've talked about previously in the over, overview. Um, the worst prognosis is for non-Hodgkin's. So if you were going to have a better Hodgkin's lymphoma, it would be the Hodgkin's rather than the non-Hodgkin's. Um, bimodal distribution, so very young, very old, but I would just know the young is the more important thing. If young people have a cancer, it is probably going to be Hodgkin's or ALL. 15 times 30, excuse me, 15 times two is 30. Where does the two come in? Because we have these two eyes for these multi, uh, like these bilobed, uh, binucleate giant cells. Um, these are called Reed Sternberg cells. These are very, very, very telling. And they look very much like owl's eyes in my opinion. Um, so the Hodgkin's subtypes, nodular sclerosis is the most common. The lymphocyte rich, well, this is the best prognosis. Um, mixed cellularity is immunodeficient patients. And there's an eosinophilia that you don't see in the next one, which is very related, the lymphocyte depleted, also with immunodeficient patients. Again, though, for all of these, the major thing to look at is just, do we have these owl eye looking um, Hodgkin's uh, Reed Sternberg cells? So jumping into the non-Hodgkin subtypes, um, T cells, again, B is greater than T. In other words, B uh, lymphocyte leukemias are more common and the B lymphocyte lymphomas are also more common. So uh, we have two types, adult T cell. So human uh, T cell lymphoma virus. So often people who use um, things like heroin, IV drug use uh, are gonna be common for this type of virus. Uh, and this is a, a lytic, causes lytic lone, bone lesions. Like we saw multiple myeloma and prostate metastasized um, uh, uh, bone cancers, this might cause a, a breakdown, uh, which can cause hypercalcemia specifically. And actually, I apologize. I think um, prostate is osteoblastic. So I take that back. I, I specifically, I believe this is multiple myeloma um, type lytic bone lesion that we might see. Um, mycosis fungoides um, is the other type. Uh, this is just going to be uh, most noteworthy for large cutaneous lesions, so here, here, and here. Um, and it might progress to something called Cesare syndrome, which is a T-cell leukemia. Um, whoo, all right, a lot more here, a lot more meat, a lot more stuff to pick apart. Uh, B-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So six major types we need to worry about. Um, BMF, bad mother fucker. <laughs> So this is 14 letters. You count them up, this is 14 letters. You know what else is 14 letters? Immunoglobulin. And that is because all three of these have the immunoglobulin chromosome 14 translocation associated with it. And as you can imagine, for a, uh, you know, for a B cell, the um, immunoglobulin heavy chain is particularly upregulated. So that is what this is showing. So 14 always is showing we're really interested in that highly upregulated immunoglobulin promoter. Um, so that, that's one way to keep all of these in mind. So let's go through Burkhoff, 
the Birkin first. So uh, the histology is that sometimes it's called a starry sky histology. So I thought B for beautiful. So macrophages look like these little white stars over here. Uh, and then we have these sheets of lymphocytes. And they actually use this word sheets a lot. And this is going to be the dark surrounding that we see over here. Um, it's caused by another B, Epstein-Barr virus is going to uh, sometimes precipitate Burkitt's lymphoma. And there's two forms. There's an endemic uh, form that we have in Africa. So I think of B for people with black skin might get this. And specifically shows up in the jaw. Um, and the next B is for boys. So it, it shows up in young um, children. It could be boys and girls, but I just thought B for boys. Um now, there's also a sporadic version. This is more likely to show up in the pelvis or abdomen, but I believe more telling, more likely to see in the vignette is the, uh, the, the endemic African version associated with the jaw. Um, so 8, 14. So 14 is the upregulated immunoglobulin heavy chain promoter. What's 8? Eight? 8 is the CMIC. I also think of 8 as being like the smallest number of all the translocations, and I think of like an 8-year-old boy, like a young kid. So this is just how, you know, you can memorize it or not. Um, Okay, so mantle cell. So man, males, uh, so this is typically showing up in males and males are more aggressive. And so this, uh, this is a particularly aggressive cancer. Again, we have this 14, uh, bad motherfucker, M for mother. And then 11 is for cyclin D1. So this is gonna be an oncogene. Uh, it's, it's going to promote, uh, you know, push the cell cycle forward. And, uh, you know, so if I have this oncogene and I put it on this highly active 14 promoter for this immunoglobulin, I now have way too much cyclin D1, which pushes the cell cycle forward, which causes cancer. Um, 11 plus 14 equals 25. And I thought to be a man at 25, that's when you can rent a car. So that's just how I remember that 11, 14 is associated with men, man and men can rent cars. Um, follicular lymphoma, uh, the two L's are... Um, associated with the L2 is, is how I keep this in mind. So follicular lymphoma, uh, BCL2. And keep in mind that BCL2 stands for B cell lymphoma. Um, I think of the menstrual cycle where when I hear the word follicle, um, and the menstrual cycle is about waxing and waning of hormones. And so similarly here, the follicular lymphoma is a waxing and waning of swelling lymph nodes, uh, much like the menstrual cycle. And then I think of the you know, follicles and the menstrual cycle, I think of puberty, when does puberty really strike its hardest between 14 and 18 years old. So that's how I remember the 14 to 18. Diffuse large B cell lymphoma. I'm seeing these double L's again, LL. Not, not the two L's of the cell, that's a cop out because everyone could have, you know, Burkitt cell lymphoma, mental cell lymphoma, et cetera. So that doesn't count. L and L, large and lymphoma. Again, this is a BCL2. BCL2, keep in mind, is a anti-apoptosis uh, gene. Um, it inhibits back and backs from oligomerizing, which you know pokes a hole in the mitochondria, which dissipates the mitochondrial membrane potential, allows cytochrome C to come out and causes apoptosis. So it's anti-apoptosis. So if I have a gain of fun function mutation where it's overactive or it's overactive because I put it on top of a, um, you know, the, the 14 highly active promoter, I'm going to have way too much anti-apoptosis. That's what causes the cancer. I think of the word diffuse as being, something is diffuse, it's kind of like everywhere. And so this is kind of everywhere in the sense that it's very common. And so I keep this in mind. Marginal cell lymphoma, not as many fun ways to go about this. 11 and 18 is associated with chronic inflammation, malt mucus uh, associated lymphoid tissue, um, uh, lymphoma specifically. Remember that this was also caused uh, by a H. pylori. So primary central nervous system lymphoma, people with HIV that has progressed to AIDS, if they get Epstein-Barr virus, this might cause a ring lesion in the brain. And this looks like toxoplasmosis. Um, so, you know, I don't think you have to worry too much about it, but clinically we would want to differentiate it from that. Um, all right, let's do a little overview of all the translocations between the leukemias and the lymphomas. Eight is the youngest, it's the smallest number. It's associated with Burkitt, which is associated with young boys. Um, I think of uh, B, C, Burkitt, and then the C over here. And then remember that the 14 is associated with the immunoglobulin promoter, which is constitutively expressed. Immunoglobulin is 14 letters. Um, and then we have bad mother fucker um, when we put all of these things together. And uh, that, that's just how I keep in mind that we have, this is specifically for Burkitt mantle and follicular lymphoma. Um, 922, uh, the... Um, 
Philadelphia chromosome altogether is 22 letters, and that's how I remember that it's the 22nd chromosome. This is the BCR able fusion. BCR is a particular gene, much like the heavy chain, which is upregulated hematopoietic cells. And able is just a receptor tyrosine kinase that is pro mitosis, pro division. So if I upregulate this by fusing it with a promoter, we're going to get way more division than we used to, which is why you get cancer. Um, this shows up in two different scenarios ALL, which is associated with the worst prognosis for adults who get AL. Remember, ALL is normally for kids, but also, and probably more importantly, for CML is more classically associated with the 922 translocation. 11 and 14, remember that adds up to be 25, and I think, well, okay, men can rent cars at 25 legally, and man for mantle, and this is aggressive because men are aggressive, and it's the cyclin D1 with the IgG heavy promoter. Remember that that is 14. 11 to 18, no way of remembering this. This is the marginal zone lymphoma. 12, 21, this is a mirror. 12 and 21 are mirrors. Mirrors go with minors. This is associated with ALL, which is for minors. It is a minor prognosis as well. It's not as bad as opposed to, like we said earlier, the 922 worst prognosis for ALL, which is often associated with adults. 14 to 18 is when, you know, puberty might hit girls the hardest. And follicles reminds me of puberty. Remember that the lymph uh, adenopathy is waxing and waning, like the menstrual cycle. And then we have these two L's for L2, BCL2, the anti-apoptosis, IgG, heavy promoter, follicular lymphoma. Um, keep in mind that the BCL2 is a gain of function mutation as well on the diffuse large B cell lymphoma. And I think of large lymphoma, again, the two L's. 15 and 17, acute promyelocytic leukemia. It is the version of AML that responds to the all transretinoic acid because of the defective receptor, which is really just vitamin A, which does not kill the cells. It just induces them to differentiate um, so that the, you know, the cancer goes away. Coming up with all of these numbers, I just was a reminder of this funny little quote from South Park where you just felt like a conspiracy therapist, you know, saying, you know, uh, you know, Philadelphia chromosome is 22 letters. And that's how you can remember. It's just a little silly, but you know what? You got to remember one way or the other. Um, so whatever works, uh, histologies, let's do it. So, um, we we'll look at this one, look at these little hairy projections. Boom. That is going to be the hairy cell leukemia. Look at these little owl eyes, clear as day, Reed Sternberg. I'm um, looking at these hour rods, which is the myeloperoxidase that is precipitated. Boom. This is going to be AML, A for hour rod, M for myeloperoxidase, also known as MPO. What is this? This is a beautiful thing. B for beautiful, B for Burkitt's lymphoma. I have these nice little pretty macrophages and these sheets. The word is sheets of lymphocytes in the background. This is Burkitt's lymphoma. Here I have these. This looks like an ugly smudge. Ugly smudge is associated with CLL. Um, and then we have our teardrops. Uh, the teardrop is associated with myelofibrosis. Here I have like a bunch of casino chips, all of these red blood cells. This is the relo. Why are they sticking together? Because I have so many antibodies and antibodies can agglutinate the red blood cells and cause them to stick together. Boom, done. One more section. Let's do it.